In this presentation, we're going to enter a purchase order into QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. We, want, we first want to consider the process for entering a purchase order. If we look at the location for a purchase order, it'd be under the Money Out section, and then we're going to have the purchase order. We're going to send a purchase order. Before we get here, however, let's first take a look at a flowchart. Look at that flowchart in the QuickBooks desktop version to consider what we're doing. So here is our flow chart. We're up here in the vendors section. So within the vendor section, we're considering specifically the purchasing of inventory. And that's where we got our arrows up top. So we got the purchase of inventory and then the receipt of inventory and then typically the payment of inventory. And that's kind of the confusing thing about the purchase order because if we're a small company, then when we send the purchase order or when we think about this step one, we may be paying at the point in time that we purchase. So the difference between a purchase order and something if we're going to be paying at that point in time is that the purchase order represents us basically making a request that we're not yet paying for. So for example, if we were purchasing something from like Amazon or something like that for our personal business that we're going to buy and then resell, when we buy something from Amazon, we're typically going to pay at the point in time that we request that, that goods to be shipped to us. So that in that case, we would have to record a financial transaction because money would have left us at that point in time when we actually make the purchase, even though we had not yet received the inventory. However, if we're talking about a situation uh, where we're a larger, uh, a larger organization and we want to get uh, we want to get goods, we might have a situation where we are going to say we have someone in China that's going to be making something for us, a company in China, and then shipping it to us like cups or something like that, we might then be able to say, I would like to request the cups, not make payment at the point in time that we make the request, but then receive the cups and then make the payment at the point in time we receive it. In that case, we would have a purchase order. Now, the purchase order is unusual in that it's the one form on this entire page that we, we don't well, it's the only form that we're not pretty much the only form that we don't have any actual financial transaction, no effect on the financial statements, nothing on the balance sheet or the income statement when we record the purchase order, because once again, we haven't made a payment, no financial transaction happened there. We didn't get any inventory. The inventory isn't in our possession yet. Therefore, there's no actual transaction, although we do want to track the purchase order because we want to match up the purchase order to the receipt that we're going to get when we receive the inventory. So what would typically happen in that case is we would request the uh, inventory, the mugs or something with the purchase order, then, and we wouldn't make any payment until they actually, re we receive them. We then re receive them. We count what we got in terms of inventory to see if they match up to the purchase order that we requested for them. If they do, then we get the bill upon receipt as well, and then we would pay the bill. So now, then we're going to go ahead and pay the bill. That's going to be the process. So that we're thinking about that process. We're going to be purchasing things. We're sending out the purchase order. No financial transaction. That's the document we want to send out. In our case, we're requesting, of course, guitars with the purchase order. So we're back to QuickBooks Online then, and we're going to be opening up our purchase order. So we're going to send a purchase order here. Send the purchase order. We're going to send it to our major vendors, the vendors that we typically get, we get inventory from. So we're going to get most of our inventory selling guitars and our major vendor is Fender. Fender's our major vendor. Actually, Fender, we're going to say this one's from Epiphone. Epiphone is our major vendor. We'll talk about Fender later. Not our major vendor, but still a vendor. So we're going to say Epiphone is our major vendor and they, we buy guitars from them. I'm going to say that's the one we want, this one right there. We're going to say tab. It will then populate. We've done business with them before. So it's populating based on the information we have for that vendor. I'm going to change the purchase order date. And I'm going to do that by saying plus on the keyboard. Plus, plus, plus till I get to 12. Notice I'm tabbing through this form. I would recommend getting used to just basically using the tab key to tab through the form rather than, you know, going to each new cell with the mouse. It's a little bit faster and it'll help you to kind of touch on each of the categories. So then we're going to tab down. Notice down here we're in the items section. We don't have the category details section open because that would be selecting basically uh, an account. We're not selecting accounts because we're typically buying inventory. So I'm going to minimize this as it usually is by default. We're down here in the items section because we want to buy inventory that will actually be tracked in QuickBooks when we purchase it. Then we're going to pick up the items that we want to purchase from 
uh, Epiphone, which is going to be our guitar. So we're going to select the drop down down here and I'm going to pick up an ELP. We're going to pick up the ELP. Now remember, you could just start typing it in here, an ELP. It'll help to populate and then you could just pick that one up. It'll populate for us. We're going to buy one ELP. The cost is going to be 400, which is, be which is being picked up from the items section. So it's already knows that because we had included that in the inventory. We could, of course, change it here, but it's being picked up from uh, the inventory item. So the amount is going to be 400. Then we have the customer. Now, why would the customer be on the purchase order? The purchase order is going to the vendor. What's the customer doing on the purchase order? Well, in some cases, we might have, for example, in our guitar shop, we might have a system set up where we basically have some guitars in the store, and then we're going to sell other the guitars basically that are custom or that are ordered for the individual. So let's say we had some Epiphones in the store. This customer comes into the store and says, that looks good, but I'd like it in green or something like that, have a different strap on it or whatever. And we say, okay, that's great. Now we're going to order it specifically for you from, uh, from Epiphone, our vendor. So that means that we can actually tie out the purchase order in this case, specifically to the customer. So I'm going to put the customer down here. And again, remember the customer has nothing to do with the purchase order. The purchase order is going to the vendor. The vendor doesn't care who the customer is. However, we care because it'll help us to tie out once we get this guitar with the fact that we need to then create a sales receipt or an invoice to this particular customer because we purchased this guitar specifically for this particular customer. So we're going to call this customer Eric uh, Music, Eric Music. And so we're just going to add this customer. I'm going to add the customer as we go. I'm going to say tab. And there we have the quick add. Again, we would probably want to add more detail anytime we have a new customer. I'm not going to do that here. But but you know, to do that, you'd say the plus button to get more detail to add, you know, the, the date contact, I mean, the contact information, the email and all that. So I'm going to say save. So there we have the customer. That's going to be it. If I scroll down, we have some more information we could put down here your message to the vendor, we could have a memo down here, we could have attachments down here. So then we at the bottom, we can print this, uh, we can make this a reoccurring item, we can save it here. And then we have the drop down where we could uh, save and new if we want to have a new one set up, we can save and send if we were to do that, it would be trying to email it, which we would have the email up top, we don't have the email. So we're gonna have to print it and then send it. Or we have the save and close and we're going to go ahead with the save and close. I'm going to say save and close. Again, no effect for the purchase order on the financial statements. But if we go into the expenses tab on the left hand side and we uh, take a look at the expenses here, we then see our purchase order. So we can see our purchase order and then we can have some actions we can take on the right. We can send it. We can copy to a bill print, uh, view and edit it and so on and so forth. Now the next step we of course expect to see if we go back to our flowchart and QuickBooks desktop is for us to receive the inventory and then have the bill with it at that point in time. So at that point in time, we're actually going to populate the bill, we will populate the bill basically with uh, the purchase order. And we can record then the increase in inventory because we physically have it at that point in time. And the other side going to a payable possibly accounts payable, or we can just pay it at that time, which would be the decrease to the uh, checking account.